G'day and welcome to Redriven. Now, the Transporter. This is the most popular van in the world. Volkswagen have sold over 12.5 million Transporters since their inception way back in the 1950s. And it feels like these are kind of the go-to van if you want something obviously immensely practical, but also a little bit Euro cool. But that doesn't necessarily mean that they're actually any good because these things have a pretty horrific reputation when it comes to reliability. But what actually goes wrong with them? Can you live with one of these things every day? What do they cost to own and maintain? And most importantly, should you buy one? Let's find out. Now, before we get deep into the transporter, can you please do us a favor and hit those like, subscribe, and bell icon buttons? And hey, after the video, go and follow us on all the socials as well. Now look, in this video, we will be focusing on the Australian variants of the T6 Transporter that was released back in 2015. It's actually still a current model. But if you're not from Australia, don't freak out because everything we're gonna be going over should relate to transporters in your local market. The T6 Transporter was and is available in a bewildering array of variations with two different wheelbases and three roof heights. A regular van, like the one we're reviewing here, a crew van and a cab chassis ute version with both single and dual cabs are also on offer. Then there is the choice of front wheel drive or four motion all wheel drive, manual or DSG automatic transmissions, and various versions of a two liter turbo diesel engine, all putting out different levels of power and torque. And the T6 Transporter also just received a midlife update called the 6.1, where it gets some new aesthetics and a bunch of new kit and technology and features. And look, we'd love to go through every single variant and specific detail of every different transporter in this video, but it'll just take hours. But we have gathered all that information and we've put it in our very handy redriven cheat sheets. Now, cheat sheets are invaluable as they provide a full breakdown of the car's model range, its common problems, what you need to look out for before handing over your hard-earned cash, how much of that cash you should be handing over, and so much more. Check it out at redriven.com or in the link below. So, does it look good? How's the exterior? Personally, I love the look of these things. Like, it's still obviously a it's just a bloody van, but Volkswagen have somehow made a van look kind of cool and stylish. Okay, it does look a lot like a T5, and the T6.1 looks kind of the same. I'm guessing the T7 is going to look pretty much identical. But there are a few little issues you need to watch out for. Now, there are loads of reports of water getting inside these, either through the crew cab sliding windows, the sliding doors at the side, or even the rear tailgate. Also, there are reports of the whole rear tailgate filling up with water. And look, I don't know how much you guys know about cars, but... Water generally is supposed to stay like out here, not in there. Also, we know of lots of reports where these door handles can get really sticky or actually just fail completely. In the central locking, there are reports of central locking completely failing, either locking all the time or just not locking. If you've got expensive things in the van, like all your belongings, your belongings may quickly become someone else's belongings if this thing doesn't lock. Also, you need to check for any water that gets stuck in behind these plastic wheel arches because, again, water can build up and that creates rust. These things really don't like water, do they? Also, there are reports that the windscreen wipers can get a little bit moody and fail to wipe, which is annoying because their whole purpose in life is to wipe. The paint and panel gaps on this particular example are fantastic, absolutely spot on. But again, we know of reports where that isn't necessarily the case. So again, just go over it thoroughly. Besides that, on this particular example, everything is great. All the black plastic is still black and it looks especially stylish on these Amarok wheels. Did you spot the Amarok wheels, Volkswagen fans? Did you know that? But you didn't. So how's the interior? Well, look, it's certainly not luxurious in here, but it's also not utilitarian like some of its rivals. And it's, it's clearly a Volkswagen design, like it's all very angular and very, very German. All the touch points are, are pretty hard, but you know, it's a van. It's, it's meant to be a bit tough and able to be scratched up. And as far as wear and tear goes, Really good because those plastics are really hard. Like there's no real obvious signs of scratching. This thing gets a solid workout. It's this guy's work van. He's traveled all around Australia with it. But wear and tear wise is, is really good. The leather on the steering wheel, okay, it's getting a little bit shiny. Leather up here, but looks pretty good. The seats have got seat covers, but I've seen these without seat covers. And again, they wear pretty bloody well. All the switch gear feels super, super solid. And the seats, they're fantastic. They're really comfortable. Even the driving position is quite nice. It doesn't feel like you're hunkered over driving a little bus. It feels sort of between a car and a van. Now look, as far as issues go, we know of reports where the air conditioning just stops blowing cold air or fails completely, or the heater fan gets like insanely noisy. So if you are in the market for one of these, make sure you check the heater, the aircon, make sure it all works. In the back, this owner has fitted it out with beautiful marine grade carpet basically everywhere and a bed. So 
It's quite luxurious back here. It's lovely. How's the tech? Well, look, that's going to vary on the year model, the variant, the spec, and what optional extras the transporter you're looking at has. Again, all the details are on our redriven cheat sheets. But in the meantime, here's a voiceover of me giving you a quick overview. Thanks, mate. All transporters come with the minimum of cruise control, a 5-inch touchscreen infotainment system, Bluetooth connectivity, USB and SD inputs, and reversing sensors. However, Volkswagen's composition media system that features a 6.33-inch color touchscreen with Android Auto and Apple CarPlay and a reversing camera have also been available, but it depends on spec and year model. Now to the issues. Look, we know of many reports where the infotainment system can kind of glitch out and freak out and fail, and Apple CarPlay and Android Auto are known to have some issues. Actually, even today, I've had some problems with Apple CarPlay connecting to my phone. Also, the buttons on the steering wheel, they're known to fail as well. Also, the lighting behind the instruments on the instrument cluster, they can also fail, which is not great if you're driving at night time and you can't see how fast you're going. Is it practical? It's a van. What do you think? Of course it's practical. It also comes with an optional motorbike mounting system. When I say optional, not optional from Volkswagen, you're going to have to go and buy that and fit it yourself. And practicality up front. Okay, you ready? Strap yourself in because there's a lot of practicality up front. You've got storage in the roof up here. You've got a big bin in the middle of the dash. You've got cup holders either side of the dash. Storage here, storage here, storage here. Good size glove box. Storage in the middle under the air conditioning. Queen storage down here next to the transmission tunnel. More storage here. The doors have two lots of door bins on them. How cool is that? There's no specific place for a mobile phone, but surely you can find a phone spot anywhere in here. Awesome storage and practicality. So what goes wrong with these? Well, surely not much because, you know, this is precision German engineering. Or is it? I'm not a mechanic, I can't answer that. Jim is. There's so much wrong with these, I don't even know where to start. Just in recent history, in this workshop alone, we've seen a multitude of problems. We've seen turbo problems, we've seen head gasket problems, we've seen EGR cooler problems, we've seen timing belt, tensioner and idler bearing failure way before the scheduled service replacement and the list goes on. Then there's also the head gasket problems, there's the diesel fuel pump problems, the vacuum pump problems, DPF problems, diesel gate, don't forget that. As far as transmissions go, the mechatronics unit in the DSG is problematic and will fail and cost you a fortune. Look, if I mention all the problems we see with these things, we'll be here forever. But a whole bunch of these things are listed on our cheat sheet, so go and check them out. Is it safe? Well, for a van, yes. All transporters come standard with dual front and front side airbags, electronic stability control and driver fatigue detection system. Also, initially available as an option but then as standard as of 2020, city emergency braking, crosswind assistance, blind spot monitoring, rear traffic alert and multi-collision braking were and are available. So what's it like to drive? Well look, vision out the front is excellent. You know, it's a van, so the front of it is right there. Judging the parameters of the front, super, super easy. But this thing doesn't have a reversing camera, so if you're reversing into a tight car spot or in, like against a loading dock, it can get pretty sketchy. It has reverse parking sensors, but no camera in a van. What is this, the 1950s? The steering is really light, but like not in a vague kind of way. Like there's still a decent amount of communication coming through the wheel, you know, considering it is a van. Um, around town, totally stress-free. And out on the open road, it actually, it does sort of weight up nicely. Power and performance wise, this is a TDI 340. So it's on the lower end of the spectrum as far as power plants in these vans go. And look, it's okay. It's not gonna win any drag races unless your opponent is on foot, but yeah, you know, it's a van, it does the job, it's fine. This is also a front-wheel drive variant, and there is just the slightest hint of torque steer if you absolutely nail that right pedal. But again, it's nothing to worry about. It's all very predictable. A negative is that the gearbox kind of gets a little bit lost at times. Like sometimes it's in way too high a gear if you're sort of going downhill, and then other times it just doesn't really know where it's shifting or what it's shifting into. And if you're accelerating away from you know a set of lights or an intersection, sometimes it's a bit like, whoa, whoa, what's going on? That's a bit of a disappointment. Sound wise, look, the engine's pretty uninspiring and it can get a bit boomy in here, even though the owner has, you know, swathed it in marine grade carpet, that does kind of reduce the boom. But it's a van. 
course it's going to be a bit boomy. As far as other noises go, look, it is basically a massive tissue box on wheels. So you do, you can kind of sense and hear and feel the whole thing twisting and moving a bit. Also, because all the interior plastics are as hard as a rock, anything you put in the pockets, they just slide around all over the place. So you just get this. That is, that is constant and frustrating. As far as suspension and ride quality goes, look, it's probably one of the more refined vans on the market. It's a stack better than a Toyota Hiace. It's probably one area that it is better than a Toyota Hiace. It's compliant, it's comfortable on long trips, it's fine. You still get a bit of that jiggle wobble thing that vans do, but for a van, great. Now look, all that aside, everything I've said, you know, both good and bad, that's not why people buy vans. They buy vans like this guy to put a bed and a motorbike in the back. So, you know, what do you expect? It's a van. It feels like driving a van. It's a nice van to drive, but still a van. Now look, as we shoot this, the prices of vans and any kind of exploring vehicle have just gone through the roof, so take that into account with these prices. But at the cheaper end of the spectrum, a high kilometre 2016 like TDI 340 in kind of shabby condition, you're going to be looking at around about $25,000. At the other end of the spectrum, a really recent TDI 450 in mint condition with low Ks, they're asking around about $60,000. $60,000 for a van. All right, cool. Volkswagen have a claimed fuel consumption level of 5.8 to 8.3 litres per 100 kilometres, depending on trim, spec, and about a million other variables. On this particular example, the claimed fuel consumption is 7.2 litres per 100 k's, but on this test, we're seeing figures closer to 8.8. .8. Volkswagen offered a three-year unlimited kilometre warranty on all transporters up until the 17th of December 2018, and it then changed to a five-year unlimited kilometre warranty. And that's great news because it means that a lot of transporters still have some factory support left on them, and you're probably going to need it. Servicing is recommended at every 12 months or 15,000 Ks, but as Jim alluded to, if anything goes wrong under here, it can cost an absolute fortune to repair. So, should you buy one? Well. Look, they're super, super cool. They're bloody lovely to drive. They're obviously really, really practical. And if the chances of things going wrong were slim to none, then obviously, yes, we would recommend buying one. But that's the problem right there because the chances of things going wrong on these, let's be honest, are pretty bloody high and honestly too high in our opinion. We just, we just don't think it's worth the risk. Look, we know there are owners out there like the guy that owns this one that have had no dramas with them whatsoever and they absolutely love them. But look, unless you're mentally and financially prepared for the things that might and probably will go wrong with them, no, you shouldn't buy one. Thank you so much for watching, guys. And what did you think of the transporter? Let us know in the comments section below. And remember, hit those like, subscribe, and bell icon buttons and go and follow us on all the socials. See you next time. And the central locking can... Okay, here we go. Yeah, That isn't necessarily... Oh, here we go, here we go. Up until the 17th... Of... Here we go. Lots of these still have some... Fact... Oh, you fucking bastard. Come on, here we go. But here's a voiceover... Of... Oh, fucking hell. Start again, here we go. And in the meantime, here's a voiceover of me giving you a quick overview of what... Oh, you f Here we go. Here we go. It's not work. I've actually had some problems with this thing already with... Uh, oh, fucking... Okay, here we go.